Well, good morning. Um, on this day, Wednesday, April 11th, 2012, at 10.30 a.m., a meeting of the Committee on Administration of the Board of Commissioners of the Chicago Park District is being held on the 8th floor boardroom of the Administration Building, located on 541 North Fairbanks. Will the Secretary please take a roll call? Chair Vice President Armstrong? Yay. Vice Chair Commissioner Lavelle? Here. President Trubert? Here. Commissioner Hanley? Here. Commissioner Koldyke? Here. Quorum is present. Let the record reflect that General Superintendent Michael Kelly and First Deputy General Counsel Timothy King are also in attendance. This meeting will please come to order. Item number one, from the Treasurer, adoption of a resolution declaring official intent regarding certain capital expenditures to be reimbursed from proceeds of a bond issue. Good morning, Commissioners. Again, my name is Melinda Malloy, Treasurer for the District. And the resolution before you authorizes the District to reimburse itself from future debt issuances um, for expenditures related to the 2012 Capital Improvement Plan, the CIP, in an amount not to exceed $35 million. So what does this do? First of all, it's important to note that this resolution does not authorize the issuance of bonds, nor does it authorize the spending of monies on any particular project. Rather, it is clarifying action that the board has already taken. Back in December of 2011, as part of the 2012 budget process, the board adopted the 2012 capital budget. That budget identified $35 million in new bond appropriations. So, subject to the approval of the board, it means that the district intends to undertake infrastructure improvements district-wide. This resolution, uh, pursuant to tax-exempt bond regulations, authorizes the district to recapture funds paid for those improvements with tax-exempt bonds. Put another way, this resolution preserves the district's ability to reimburse capital expenditures associated with the 2012 CIP prior to the issuance of tax-exempt bonds. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Move to approve. Second. Will the secretary take a roll call for the adoption of the matter? Yes, sir. Chair Vice President Armstrong? Here. Vice Chair Commissioner Lavelle? Yes. President Trobert? Aye. Commissioner Hamlin? Aye. Commissioner Koldek? Aye. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Thank you. Item number two from the General Counsel Amendment to Chapter 3 of the Code of the Chicago Park District. Good morning, Commissioners, Superintendent Kelly, President Trauber, Timothy King, First Deputy General Counsel. What we're asking for today is uh, under Section 7.2 of the Chicago Park District Act, we're asking for the authority to uh, slightly modify Chapter 3 of the code pertaining to um, gifts from outside vendors uh, to park employees. Uh, specifically, the Park District desires to impose a policy consistent with the Mayor's executive order, recent executive order, banning city procurement employees specifically from accepting gifts from contractors. Although, and this is very key to point out, there have been no complaints charging any improper contract or conduct related to the acceptance or solicitation of gifts by Park District employees of the Department of Purchases. The recommended ban would communicate that the highest standard of integrity, honesty, and due process exists in the district's procurement process. So it would actually slightly beef up the existing uh, section of the code, Chapter 3, BE, and it would specifically target employees from the purchasing department because of their direct relation to outside vendors. So moved. Can I just ask a question? So what, sure. what does our code say now? Currently, President, the code requires any employee to report a gift of over $50 or more uh, to their immediate supervisor and report it uh, to our ethics officer. So this would uh, specifically uh, eliminate that exemption, so to speak, and uh, employees in the purchasing department would, would be prohibited from accepting any gift, no, uh, no matter how nominal in value. Right, and, I, and I'd like to just add to you said that um, there hadn't been any complaints, um, but 
but not to parse it, but you know, I specifically have asked people, have you taken anything? Have you had a lunch? Have you had a cup? And I've been told no. So while we're, we're, we're you know, getting this in line where it is the, the number is zero, that it, from a practical point of view, uh, from what I can, I've been able to understand, that has in fact been our conduct, uh, at least in recent times. You're exactly right. This is not in response to anything. In fact, without um, uh, t talking out of school, so to speak, it's in response to other, you know, problems at other sister agencies, which have been widely publicized. Uh, Superintendent Kelly's policy has always been, you know, uh, Christmas time, a vendor will send over some cookies or something. You make that available for your entire staff. You know, you put it out, and you know everybody grabs a piece of candy, that type of thing. But other than that, any any gifts to a particular person is uh, spe specifically uh, prohibited. Very good. So moved. Second. Second. If no objection, we will apply the last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. Motion carried, and the matter is adopted. Item number three, from the director of Green Initiatives, authorization to enter into a contract for the purchase and delivery of beet grooming equipment. Good morning, commissioners, uh, President Schaubert, Superintendent Kelly. Uh, my name is Brendan Daly. I'm the director of Green Initiatives. And I'm here today to ask for authority for the general superintendent or his designee to enter into a contract <coughs> excuse me, with Chicago United Industries for the purchase and delivery of a small, a large, and a walk-behind beach grooming machine capable of raking and sifting both dry and wet sand. The equipment will have the ability to clean at a depth of four to, uh, sorry, four to ten inches below the sand surface. The equipment will enhance our existing fleet of breach grooming equipment, allow us to get smaller debris out of the sand, and allow us to better clean street end beaches with the smaller machine. The Chicago Park District received grant funding from the United States Environmental Protection Agency under the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative to improve existing beach grooming equipment and add additional beach grooming units. The Great Lakes Restoration Initiative is a major federal initiative of President Obama's to fund investment in protecting and restoring the Great Lakes. Funding for beach grooming equipment was included in a grant awarded to us in um, 2011 for a range of beach management efforts that help to protect water quality. This contract was publicly advertised as an invitation for bid. Two bids were received on the due date and time and were publicly opened and read aloud. The bids were carefully reviewed as to the content of the responses relative to the project's scope and total cost. The contract is a one-year contract with two one-year extension options. The amount not to exceed is $104,830, and again, this is totally grant-funded. Uh, the minority and women-owned participation for the contract includes 25% minority-owned and 5% women-owned. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, also here today is the Director of Natural Resources, Adam Schwarter, whose department will uh, manages beach grooming will actually use the equipment. Did you mention it's a, is it a smaller machine than what we currently have? It's actually three types of machines. One is the typical beach rake that we currently have. One is a smaller beach rake, and then one is actually a walk behind. Uh, I would describe it like a snow blower sort of machine, you know, that you might use on your driveway. To it's, it's, it, I'm near, uh, near 31st Street Beach, and it seems like a lot of the uh, larger machines do a fabulous job of getting the, the majority of the beach clean, and then they kind of, as they turn around, they miss the about a 25 yard area and it's heavily trashed. I don't know if that affects uh, like seagull you know issues or whatever but if we have a machine that does uh, you know these corners so to speak it, it seems like it really clean things up nicely. Yeah, one of the problems is that uh, our larger machines actually do damage when they get too close to structures or do damage to themselves so this piece of equipment will actually respond to that which has been an issue related specifically to the ADA accessible pass through the beaches. It's going to really change the way we do our work. Good news. And the other thing was the depth of these tines we talked about last year having a, uh, a, a, a <coughs> superior cleaning effect. Do you think this will reduce any, you know, the bird related stuff that we have on the beaches from time to time from beach closings? Uh, perhaps. What the biggest benefit uh, of this new equipment is to allow us to pick up smaller debris. So more debris we're going to be able to pick up. And certainly having more debris gone means there's less. Uh, food sources available for animals, so perhaps it will, yes. One other quick point. Um, at, at Montrose Beach in the last couple of years, the, um, there are tournaments for volleyball, and we found that there's been a lot of little pieces of glass. For some reason, people are breaking glass bottles at Montrose more than they used to. Uh, these machines will allow us to pick up those smaller pieces of glass, which have been problems for the players on those beaches. <laughs> 
So moved. And, and just one more quick thing, Adam. Can we get a? I'm sorry. Can we get a? Uh, in in, in uh, with the beach season upon us in another few months, can we get maybe the next board meeting a uh, holistic view of of what we're doing on the beaches and the whole issue with beach closings and where we are with that next month? I think Brandon and I could to do that together. Great. Okay. We have a member of the public who has signed up to address the board, uh, Mr. George Blakemore. On this issue. Yes, ma'am, on this issue. I know, I see. I need to look at it. We ask that you please limit your comments to two minutes. Thank you very much. And to the chairman and citizens who are present and staff, I did mark this particular item and the other ethics item also, I guess I came in a little late. However, uh, sources of fund, federal grant from the United States, um, I, I, I wasn't very clear, and perhaps I was a little late, and maybe you can, the chairman can let him address this issue again, where it could be very clear to me. This, this new equipment, you, you, you're contracting this equipment out uh, to a vendor, and the vendor will will deliver this, purchase this equipment, and deliver this equipment to the park district. Uh, I think I put down in-house. Was it a way that that the park district could have purchased this this equipment, at least this equipment? And also had it uh, delivered at at the various uh, sites. If it's one machine or whatever that could be used, we're in an economic uh, crisis here in in the park district, in the city, the county, and the state. And we have to think out of the box. And perhaps even though it says a source of funds, a, a federal grant, this is still our money. We cannot, we must identify uh, the, the beltway with us. We are the federal money. We are the state money. 30 seconds remaining. We are the city money, the county money. So just don't say this is a federal grant and, and it's just free. It's not free because we pay federal taxes. So perhaps these issues should be looked at very clearly and if it's any way that we can start doing this stuff in house, it will it it, it will cut a lot of the ex expense. So let's let, let's not You've just exceeded think, your two minutes. Let's not just think that we're getting money from the federal government. This is our money, and we must be prudent in using them. Thank you again. And have a peaceful and blessed day. And I did put down many items, so I'm a little late. So perhaps uh, this afternoon I will be able to address some of these issues. All of you have a happy day. So moved. Second. If no objection, we will apply the last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Item number four, from the first Deputy General, General Counsel, Authority to extend and expand the leased area at Building J in Peterson Park with the City of Chicago. Good afternoon, President Traubert, Commissioner, Superintendent Kelly. Uh, we're asking for the authority today pursuant to the State Act uh, to allow the Chicago Park District to expand our existing lease with the City of Chicago uh, for Building J in Peterson Park to the second floor. We currently occupy uh, the first floor and have since 1970 or thereabouts. And uh, this will allow us to expand our operation into the second floor. It's in keeping with the superintendent's directive to get our administration and um, specifically our programming folks out in the field where they can really be uh, even more effective. And uh, we plan on putting some of our program folks up in the second floor here. We're going to lease, extend the lease with the uh, city for that and it's going to be uh, for a dollar a year and if you look on page 219 of your iPads uh, you get a kind of an overhead of uh, 
Peterson Park and where Building J sits within there. Do we have any up rehab maintenance, you know, any construction we got to do to accommodate our employees here? There's a little bit of uh, construction up upgrading. Uh, Pat LaVar, Chief Operating Officer, has been working with the uh, city, the appropriate city departments to kind of do that build out and make it specific to our needs, but we don't think it's that, uh, is that expensive. Is that our cost? Their, whose cost is it? It's our, our cost. cost. What had it been doing? What had been happening in that space? Um, it's if you're familiar with the area, it's um, it's North Park Village. It's the old tuberculosis sanitarium on the oh. north side. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the city of Chicago in the s late 70s took it over. There's a multifaceted, uh, there's a, what the Chicago Park District uses, is uses one of the buildings as their field house, the Peterson Park field house. That's what uh, Tim King's talking about. The second floor was not part of the lease. We're going to move administrative staff out there. It's minor uh, construction costs build out um, in terms of that. We also, uh, in part of this, l the, the non-amendment to the lease, we also use a gymnastics center there. We run a gymnastics program out of there. And we also um, own uh, the nature area that's in there and, and run programming out of that as well. Um, the rest of the property is managed by the city of Chicago in terms of the landscaping and, and uh, utilities. Actually, they still pay the utilities. Um, but there's a non-denominational church on the property. There's a housing, uh, senior housing uh, uh, parcel. Uh, there's an administration building. There's a mental health, or I'm um, sorry, not mental health, but there's a health clinic. Um, long term, the city's looking for us to take it over. I don't know if we're necessarily there yet in terms of uh, our financial commitment to that, um, but this is going to help us um, be able to move the people out and use uh, old space. There used to be CDOT public way inspectors on the second floor, and at one time they used to run uh, the CAPS program out of the area, out of there. It's vacant, it's dormant, um, it, it, so it's, it's a good fit for us mm -hmm. instead of acquiring more property to maintain over there. So uh, it makes sense. staffers will be on the... Uh 20, 20, I believe, or 15 or 20 upstairs. Right now we're moving um, uh, North Park Village, Peterson Park Field House is the location, South Shore Cultural Center, and also um, Kennecott Park. So this will be a, a northwest side base of operation? It, the north side. We tried to keep it within the regional side. There's about 60 people from this building that we're moving out, um, so 20, 20, 20. Uh, South Shore Cultural Center, the people moved out in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and also at Kennecott, we'll go in as soon as this agreement's uh, signed and uh, start doing a minor build out and uh, start moving the people from the fourth floor here out there, the who remains. Hey Mike, uh, th these moves that we're making here, do they uh, allow for uh, cost savings in, in this facility uh, with, with us um, moving folks out? Um, I would imagine there's probably some, some savings in travel expenses. You know, it's our hope still to put that space on the market for a potential lease, um, generate new revenue. That's one option. Uh, we haven't had a taker yet. Um, it's not a, it's, it's not as significant a cost savings as it was a good government move to get 60 employees that were traveling downtown every day back out into the field where mm -hmm. their business is. It'll make them accessible to the people in the communities. I think it's going to have a tremendous impact. I mean, I've, I've toured Kennecott, Peterson, and South Shore, and anytime you bring in the presence of 20 more employees, it has a, it's a, it's like a shot in the arm to the community. Uh, in South Shore, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how nice the space looks now. And uh, we're already, I was just getting compliments yesterday in Kennecott that people feel like there's a new energy coming out of that field house. So moved. Second. If no objection, we will apply the last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. That concludes the Committee on Administration. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those against? Motion carried. The Committee of Administration is now adjourned. On this day, Wednesday, April 8th, uh, 11th, at, at the meeting of the Committee on Capital Improvements of the Board of Commissioners of the Chicago Park District is being held in the 8th floor boardroom of the administrative building, located 541 North Fairbanks. Would the Secretary please take a roll call? Yes, sir. Chair Commissioner Caldike? Here. Vice Chair Commissioner Salgado? Commissioner Shalaby? Commissioner Lavelle? Here. President Schaubert? Here. 
Madam Mr. President, let the record reflect that Commissioner Hamlin, Vice President Armstrong, General Superintendent Michael Kelly, and First Deputy General Counsel Timothy King are also in attendance. The meeting will please come to order. Item 1 from the First Deputy General Counsel Authority to accept the transfer of title for Paul Nisano Park, number 531 from the City of Chicago. Tim. Thank you, Commissioners. President Traubert, Superintendent Kelly. Um, another legal matter to discuss here today. Uh, since 2008, the Chicago Park District has maintained, operated, and uh, fully functioned out at uh, a park commonly known, known as Stearns Quarry, located at 2850 South Halstead. You may recall last year, the board adopted the uh, and adopted and authorized the um, administration to rename the park Palmasano Park, which is now which is what it is now known as. On page, I think, two, uh, 228 of your iPads, there's a overhead view of the location in question at 2850 Halstead in the 11th Ward. It's a very old picture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I wanted to call your attention. It's 230. Uh, that is a 2008 picture. So since that time, that really doesn't do justice to the park. It's uh, completely greened over. There's all sorts of uh, foliage out there, uh, trees in full blossom, and it's really enjoyed by the community. There's a uh, meandering path and walkway that goes all the way top, uh, atop a, a uh, hill. There's fitness equipment. There is a, uh, there's a pond. So uh, the Park District has really done a lot to improve and maintain the property. What we're asking for today um, is just the authority to go from our existing lease from the city to take it uh, to full title and um, accept it into our portfolio, as is our mission. This will add another 20.26 acres, strike that, 26.6 acres to our uh, portfolio. Is the city donating? No cost to us, no cost to the park district, other than the uh, money we've spent over the years to maintain and operate it. Have a motion. Second. We need a motion. So moved. Oh, I thought you said you had a motion. Mm -hmm. There a second. Second. Will the secretary take a roll call for the adoption of the matter? Chair Commissioner Koldak. Aye. Commissioner Lavelle. Aye. Aye. President Robert. Aye. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Item number two from the Director of Natural Resources authorization to enter into a contract for supply for the supply and delivery of turf grass seed. Adam. Good morning, Commissioners, President Traubert, Superintendent Kelly, Adam Schwerner, Director for the Department of Natural Resources. It is recommended that an order be entered authorizing the General Superintendent or his designee to enter into a contract with Christie Weber and Company for the purpose of supplying and delivering turf grass seed. The contract is for an initial two-year term at a value of 350000 with three one-year extension options available based on budget allocation. District-wide, the Chicago Park District maintains over 6,000 acres of turf grass, including more than 1,000 turf-based athletic fields. This requires, among other operations, regular seeding and overseeding of turf areas, part particularly athletic fields by the Department of Natural Resources field staff. It is the intent of this IFB to provide the means by which to procure the correct type of seed mix on a timely basis at competitive prices. Any questions? We have to buy all this in advance? You just can't do it on a per job basis or you're locking in a price or? <clears throat> well, we have special mixes. We have five mixes. We have one for um, full sun. We have one for salty areas that are impacted by uh, salt, like on Lakeshore Drive or sidewalks. We have a, a low mow turf, which is a larger growing turf, which we don't have to mow as much. And we have the regular seed mix, which, uh, again, is to our specifications. After years of experience, we know the mixes we want. Um, to get this kind of seed in the bulk we need it every year, spring and fall, we have to have a contractor available to do that for us. Is she mixing it or? Uh, I thought she was a service provider. I thought Christy Weber was a she service is, provider. She uh, is. This actually, uh, in this bid, we actually had uh, Deer, which is the provider of, you know, large landscape equipment, maintenance equipment. They also bid on this contract. So uh, people want to enter into providing uh, such things as this. I think give, given our economic times, people are branching out. Any other questions? We have a member of the public who has signed up to speak. Of course. Thank you.
Good morning. I begin to think that God bless America, where you can have a citizen, a poor black citizen, to get up and come to a public hearing and to speak out on issues that affect our community and public policy. So sometimes I'm very uh, critical of, of America by the legacy of slavery, but however, God bless America that I'm able to come to a meeting and, and given the time to speak out on issues of public policy. So, so w I'm, I'm just forced to love America because America has, has, has its dark Doesn't spots the to the item and hand? it George, we're here to light talk about spots. So, well, well, then this contract, I did circle this contract. I'm very aware of circling this con uh, a contract, but I'm very spiritual also. So this particular contract that I think that too many of these contracts now seem like a George's, George's own, the, the in-house. I believe that, that the Park District could have purchased this seed and delivered to the various uh, areas uh, to be out. I, I, I'm, I'm more now thinking that in-house, that you definitely do not have to contract out, that you have qualified staff, expert in, in this field that could have purchased this, these seeds and distributed these seeds. So again, thank you. And again, God bless America. And then again, I help connected the dots. And then again, all of you have a peaceful and blessed day. Have a motion, please. So moved. moved. No objection. We'll apply the last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. So motion carried and the matter is adopted. Item number three from the Director of Planning, Construction, Facilities, authority to accept the transfer of property located at 2800 South Sacramento <coughs> Avenue from the City of Chicago for a new park, Park 553. Rob? <coughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you, Rob Raymond, Director of Planning, Construction, and Facilities. I'm just going to pull up this uh, PowerPoint. It is recommended that the Board of Commissioners of the Chicago Park District adopt an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of property from the City of Chicago commonly referred to as 2800 South Sacramento Avenue. It's further recommended that the Board authorize the General Superintendent or his designee to negotiate, enter into, and execute such agreements, amendments, and indemnities and instruments, and perform any and all acts as shall be deemed necessary or advisable in connection with the transition described herein. The City of Chicago acquired property at 2800 South Sacramento and intends to transfer it to the Park District for the development of a new park to address the needs of the South Lawndale Community Area and the, tw uh, the 12th Ward. The South Lawndale Community has one of the largest open space deficits in the city. This approximately 21.42 acre site, um, per the request of the community and the support of the local aldermen, has development plans. Uh, to, that include two artificial turf soccer fields, soft surface playground uh, with spray feature, baseball fields, skate park, basketball courts, walking and jogging trails, uh, garden plots for the use of the community, landscape, native landscape areas, and comfort station with concession and other park amenities. Um, there, we've received substantial funding for this project, uh, $8 million, uh, from the state of Illinois and uh, DCOE grants. Um, also, four million from the City of Chicago's TIF, and then there's the remainder is uh, Chicago Park District. We've already spent uh, 7.5 in acquisition, um, again from TIF, um, and the remainder is now being used for design and construction of the park. Uh, we plan to bid this job um, uh, later this summer and construct fall 2012 through fall 2013. There's a lot of information about the uh, environmental conditions of the site that you have in your, your board books, but the short version is uh, the site was previous, previously owned by Honeywell, 
They produced at, um, asphalt roofing shingle, uh, single, shingles and uh, like tar sealant project uh, products. Um, they've since remediated under the order of USPA, US EPA, and plans approved by the US EPA. They've installed a cap, and the US EPA has determined the site to be usable or uh, reused for uh, reusable for recreational uses. Um, Honeywell is on board for maintenance of the cap throughout the life of the property, so they're always there to maintain the integrity of the cap. What we do in the future for site development just needs to be uh, approved in advance as a work plan for the US EPA to be suitable to maintain the cap. And then that's our involvement in terms of environmental. And Dan Cooper is here also from our um, Green Initiatives Department if you have any more specific questions regarding the environmental. It, will there be, um, or I should say, how large will the concession and restroom area be? Because it looks like a very small indoor. Yeah, it, it, right now we're counting on just a very small facility that we're trying to locate as close as possible to existing utilities and cut down on the amount of any utility extensions into the park, obviously because of environmental considerations. So we're going to work within our existing construction budget to try to deliver as much as possible within this plan. Again, this is a framework for what we'll be moving forward with in design and costing. Um, we think there's a great opportunity to bring, bring down costs through use of artificial turf fields, given that we have a lot of gravel base in the cap. Um, that's a perfect base for that kind of um, use. So um, we'll be taking those cost-saving um, ideas in mind as we move through design, continue to work with the community to, re to refine the design concepts. So it's unlikely there would be a field house. Um, it's not within the current thing, certainly not anything with major uh, footings or excavation. By virtue of the fact this is capped, you right. can't, you can't yeah. put a foundation, right? Uh, we, we can break through the cap if we do it in such a way that's approved by the US EPA and then build in such a way that the cap is then re, you know, basically reinstalled. Yeah. If whatever is installed um, constitutes a, the cap, then we're... You've made the point, but I'd like to emphasize the other places where we've built artificial turf fields we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars taking dirt away mm -hmm. and putting gravel there and then being able to construct an artificial turf field and it's already here it's, for us. It's right there. It's almost the perfect base. So there's just some grading work we need to do and then um, we should be able to, I mean, we're really hopeful that we can, we can develop a great heavily used sports complex for this community um, at a reasonable rate. Is this Cardenas? Yes, Correct. Yes. Yep. Just a quick question. What's the life ex what's the lifespan of this artificial turf? Um, the lifespan of an ar a typical artificial turf, the pre board president knows from Take the Field, we've built a lot of them recently, is around 10 years. Um, properly maintained, we probably get what, 12 to 14. We've proven we can stretch the uh, useful life to probably 15 yeah. in some of our sites. Uh, I do want to state for the record to, uh, to the board and, and for the record that it was State Senator Tony Munoz who was instrumental in getting the $8 million grant from uh, DCEO uh, with the state. So thank you to Senator Munoz. This is going to be really nice for that. Yeah, this is, any other comment? This has been a long time coming. I'm glad we're getting this one done. It's going to be great for the community. And I know the community has been in here you know, over the years supporting this and, and concerned about how we're going to work through the environmental issues. And so my hands mm -hmm. off to the team to get yeah, and, and you know we all have this civic pride about our parks land, but but as you pointed out, there are areas that are so-called underparked, and mm -hmm. this is one. And so th this is great that we can uh, acquire this land for this this community. Very excited. When do you think we ribbon cut this? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 2013. Uh, you know, probably late summer <laughs> or fall 2013. Right. It's a it's a very big site. Can I have a motion. Oh, before we take a motion, uh, Mr. Blakemore would like to address the board on this matter. Thank you. I, I must stay on target, and I must connect the dots. This meeting is, they have a website here, and it's very good. So I encourage all citizens participation in the Park District meetings, both the committee meetings and the board meetings in the afternoon, too. So, uh, uh, constantly, George Blakemore, I'm wanting to see lines and lines of our citizens coming up with their input. I just am expressing my ideals and what I believe. 
uh, I'm wanting to know more about uh, the type of community input that uh, the times and place of, of these meetings that would bring the people, the users of this uh, park, the community involvement. So it, it, it just made a general statement that the Altman and uh, has input of the community. If in the future these, this will be spelled out in the transmittal letters and in the information that is given to the public. So um, of the cost and then uh, this connection. Always I'm wanting to know it was industrial evidently. They had to have a cap on it evidently because it was some type of hazard. Now, 30 also, seconds remaining. Thank you very much, young lady. Also, I'm wanting to know about the artificial tur turf. Time and time and time again, it pops up. And we're into green now. You know, green means natural. It doesn't mean artificial. So perhaps you can, uh, in the future, and you'll say, we're, we're talking about this project. Bring somebody in to clear up the negative you effect and the minutes. harmful effect and the health effect that it has on artificial turf versus the natural thing, the green thing. We're into everything is environmental. So thank you again and have a peaceful and blessed day. Any other discussion? Sure. Can I have a motion, please? Is there a motion? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. No objection for the last available roll call vote from the prior matter of this matter. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Item number four from the Director of Planning and Construction and Facilities, authorization to enter into contract for Garfield Park Conservatory Rehabilitation of Propagating Houses, and we will also have a presentation from Unita Rushing as well, President of the Garfield Park Conservatory Alliance. Thank you. Uh, it's recommended that an order be entered authorizing the general superintendent or designee to enter into a contract with Mecor Industries Limited for the rehab rehabilitation of the propagating houses at the Garfield Park Conservatory. The contractor was selected pursuant to bidding. No work may commence and no payment shall be made prior to, to the execution of a written agreement. Uh, the construction will be substantially completed by October 15, 2012 for propagation houses 1 through 4 and 10 and by March 13, 2013 for propagating houses 5 uh, through 9 and 11. The contract amount is not to exceed $3,947,522. Uh, there's 32% minority uh, business participation and 50% women-owned business participation. The work includes but is not limited to Permanent repairs through the, uh, to the building glass roofs and structural restoration of propagation houses 1 through 11. Removal and replacement of wood beam roof framing. Reconditioning and strengthening of steel roof framing members. Complete removal of temporary roof covering materials. Comp uh, uh, repair to concrete foundation walls. Replacement of uh, wooden window sills. Uh, jams and uh, assessment of the roof fence. Lighting systems and roof drainage systems. Um, it's obvious that not all this work is related to hail damage. About 1.67 million of it um, is uh, due to the fact that since we're going to be in there replacing the roof, we're taking care of items that need to be addressed now while the building's under construction. Um, uh, let's see. And with that, I mean, I guess actually that's a good segue that uh, some of the work that we're doing is our is our own, not covered by insurance. It's a good way segue to um, introduce. Um, you need a rushing and Margo Morris from the Garfield Park Conservatory Alliance to talk about fundraising and what's happening out there right now. Thank you, Commissioners, President Chalbert, Commissioner, uh, Superintendent Kelly. I am Margo Morris. I'm the newly elected chair of the Garfield Park Conservatory Alliance. And I'm here to tell you that since the crisis in June, at the end of June last year, our board has been so energized and galvanized and largely because of the outpouring of support from the public, from everywhere, across the country, when they saw those video, the video footage of what happened at the conservatory. 
And my job and my priority uh, in my term is to really galvanize our board more and reach out to enhance our board, reaching out to individuals, people from the corporate sector to build our board, and in so doing, increase our fundraising and our marketing. And our hope, and my hope, personal hope, is that we will bring the conservatory to the point where it is one of the top five cultural destinations in the city of Chicago, in the state of Illinois, in the region, and in the country. We're working very hard at that. We have a wonderful partnership with the Park District and with the staff. Mary Eisenbach, who is the director of conservatories, Adam Schwerner, our director of natural resources, and my colleague and uh, partner, Unita Rushing, president of the Alliance. And I'll introduce Unita Rushing to you. Thank you, Marika. Uh, good morning, Commissioners, President Traumbert and Mr. Ke Superintendent Kelly. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Just give you a brief update on our progress. We've been in this partnership now since 1995, and um, we're pleased with the progress that we're making and the success that we're having. I put together a packet of information for you that gives you a, a snapshot of uh, our progress and fundraising over the years. As you can see, it's been more than $21 million. We've taken on the challenge of assisting with the fundraising for the rebuilding of the conservatory since the damage. And as you can see, we've raised nearly $600,000 of a $1.5 million goal. We are now gearing up for phase two of that fundraising effort. Uh, it's been challenging. First, people thought we were closed. Uh, now they think we're repaired because of the temporary roofing. So we're, we will be addressing that as well. Uh, but we will continue with the one pain at a time campaign until we reach our goal. The other thing that this crisis has provided for us, and one thing that I'm very excited about, is the opportunity to identify new donors. Major gifts that we've received have been uh, just outstanding. And we've been able to expand our fundraising department so that we have brought on some new expertise and human resources to help us really cultivate these new donors and to go after lots of, lots of others since we know that they're out there and they want to support our efforts. In your packet, you will also find a snapshot of our programs there. This crisis has forced us, because of limitations of space, to rethink and re-envision some of our programming. Some of the things we've traditionally done will continue, our Morning Glories programs for early childhood. There's a lot of research that says if you engage children at a very young age, they are more likely as adults to be good stewards of the environment. So we focus a lot on those pro kinds of programs for young people as well as for families. We have some adult programs as well. Our Floridica was a big hit this year where we had flower, a runway show of uh, fashions made from plants and flowers. We had uh, sold out in less than 48 hours for our beer under glass that's happening May 17th. And we are moving into our backyard at the conservatory. We will do a number of numerous programs out there this summer uh, due to the construction. And we hope that you will find time to come out and visit, bring your families, invite your friends to some of our campfires, to our children's play area out back, and to see our newly constructed uh, urban gardening in, in the back. Our beekeeping program is going gangbusters. And we're really pleased because we're extending our partnerships beyond Garfield Park down to the museum campus. We were just awarded um, a grant to do the beekeeping at the aquarium. They're doing a, a, a test out there this year. And if that goes well, we have the potential of expanding to other museums in the parks. So we're real pleased about that. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to address that for you. And I hope that you'll take a moment and go through this packet and learn more about us. Why, pure curiosity, why is the aquarium interested in a beekeeping? Well, they have a garden out there, okay. and <laughs> the bees help to um, uh, help to sustain the garden. But we get a great benefit because we have 10 hives at the conservatory, and we harvest the honey, which we sell in our gift shop, but we really can't keep it on the shelves. We run out as soon as it's packaged. So we'll get the benefit of keeping that honey. We'll be able to distribute that to our constituents as well. So bees are very important to our e ecological balance and the environment. So we think that more of the museums will want to have bees as well. Thanks. You know, thank you for being here. And uh, you know, just in the time I've been involved, 
um, your presence and work and that of your organization makes a huge difference. And I hate to think of what Garfield Park uh, would look like without you being on the scene. So thank you very, very much. Well, thank you very much. I hope that we can get a lot more of this work accomplished in the next few years. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Could you just quickly put into into the big picture context the reconstruction of, of the Garfield Park Conservatory, where this is and where we are with the rest of the stuff, all in one minute or less? Sure, it's a good point. This is just the propagation houses where they grow plants to be then displayed publicly. Um, so it's sort of a back of house operation. There is a lot of work to be done back there, but judging by you can see from the size of the contract. However, there's also the big public houses, uh, the Fern Room, the Desert House, um, the Show House. Those are the big things that everyone sees. We went out to bid um, to, for repairs on those houses, but did not get um, as healthy a participation as we wanted to on those bids. Given that we have a perfectly adequate temporary um, roofing system up now, we can afford to go out, rebid, get better prices, and allow the temporary to stay up for one more year. Any other questions? We have uh, a couple of us, so we need to do the motion. Mr. Blakemore would like to address the Great. board regarding this item. I did enjoy listening and getting information about Garfield Park Conservatory. I am aware, and all most of the citizens are aware of what happened with the storms and breaking up the glass and it needs it needs to be made whole and to be uh, repaired. However, uh, I, I didn't read my supplementary letters and I didn't do any research, but, but I am constantly going to public meetings every day. And so I have a general idea of public policy. So when you say it, uh, when these contracts and you say MBEs and WBEs, you must understand, I'm not up here criticizing this board. See, some of them, uh, 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 people will think that I'm coming up just beating on the board. The, you all have a mandate from, I'll keep going back to the beltway. And when it comes to affirmative action and the terminology of who is a minority? I'm specifically concerned with the, the amount of contracts that people of color, particular black people, receive. So I'm not here only to beat up on the board with not defining. I think this, seconds is, remaining. this is a federal issue. George, how does this relate to the issue at hand? That the issue is that I'm wanting to know I can, I'm very enlightened and intelligent and I can speak. I do this daily, weekly, and all the time. The issue is specifically, you see, I'm not going to be hostile. Specifically, I'm wanting to know the percentage of contracts that have gone to black vendors. You have exceeded your two minutes. So now I have answered your questions and you can deal with it or not deal with it. Have a peaceful and blessed day. Is there a motion? So Sorry, moved. Can we get him the answer? Yep, thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. I have no objection. We'll play the last table roll call vote from this prior matter to this matter. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Item number five from the Director of Planning, Construction, Facilities, Authorization to Participate in the City of Chicago contract number 24819 for tradesman services. Rob? Thank you. Pursuant to the joint purchasing agreement between the Chicago Park District and the City of Chicago, it is recommended that the General Superintendent and CEO, CEO enter into a contract with Anchor Mechanical, Anchor Mechanical Incorporated for tradesman services. The amount of services provided each year will depend upon requirements and shall not exceed budget appropriations for operations and capital expenses for the op, um, applicable year. The initial contract term is 9-1-2011 uh, through 8-31-2017. The City of Chicago's Chief Procurement Officer may extend this contract for a period of no more than 181 calendar days after the expiration date of the initial term. Um, the scope of services is uh, simply to provide trained, professional, skilled, and experienced tradesmen on an as-needed basis. Uh, there's a uh, 
minimum requirement for 25% minority owned and 5% women owned businesses. Um, just in short, this is just another tool for us to use um, to handle um, temporary gaps in, in workforce or spikes in work orders. It also allows us to compare um, different ways of getting work done, promote competition between you know, in-house trades, out-of-house trades, uh, other avenues such as outside contracting services. So again, it's there in a perfect world. We don't need this kind of surface, uh, service, um, but it's not a perfect world, so we just like to have another tool for us to uh, address work when it happens. So this is just a tool in the kit bag. Exactly. Any comment? Uh, Mr. George Mark Blakemore would like to address the board regarding this matter. George, no one on the Cubs or I'm, White I'm, Sox I'm, are getting I'm, as many advances as you I'm, are I'm, today. Pardon me, pardon me, sir. I, I have a vision of about 20 people behind, him, behind me that's addressing these issues. So what makes me so outstanding, I guess, a difference that when you have these public meetings, you don't have the public input. So I'm bringing a credibility. You should embrace me and be glad that you have someone from the public and not be resentful of the many times that I've appeared on these very items. So again, uh, specifically, please do not be offended. If you are, it's okay. But don't, don't take it personally. I'm saying that we should identify these vendors by race, putting them all in one pot, melting pot, women, white women, black women, Hispanics, Asian, I'm wanting, and it should be transparent to know what percent of these contracts are going to black people again. So please do not be hostile to me because I am here representing the public. This is a public setting. And if you have 12 items, and I speak on 12 items and no one else speak, please do not say little insulting remarks to me. It's unacceptable. 30 seconds remaining. So again, I'm, I'm emphasized, and the last thing, the tradesmen. I, I think when you get federal grants, there's no mandate that you would have to have union workers is so many people that's not in the union, and historically, the union have excluded people of color, particularly black. So again, have a peaceful and blessed day, and perhaps um, someone say, go to the federal government, go to Beltway, don't come and just pound on the park district. You have exceeded I'm your not, 10 minutes. But you all can also go to the Beltway and make these changes. Again, have a peaceful and blessed day. Can I get a clarification? Did we not ask and are we not going to at some point in the near future get a recap from procurement about the MBE, WBE um, You did numbers? ask and you are going to get a recap. And I believe we do spell out in every board letter the minority participation. Do we not, Rafi or Tanya? Do we not? We do. Good morning, Commissioners. Rafi Serafian, Director of Purchasing. With each award, we, we with each uh, solicitation that we advertise, they go out uh, with uh, MBE and WB requirements. We require 25 and 5. And so we do receive with each uh, uh, with each bid or proposal received the MBE WBE schedules that identify by name all the MBE and WBE subcontractors that are going to be utilized on that particular contract. Utilization in terms of percentages and then dollar amounts. Uh, so we do we do track all that, and and then and, and then we uh, in our uh, court in the quarterly report that we delivered last month, uh, we we broke everything down and we'll be coming back to the board again in June for the second quarter report, uh, and at which time we'll give you all that detail uh, uh, in in the report. How might Mr. Blakemore find out this information so that he does not have to complain about it not being available? Is this available online? What is available online are the names of firms that are certified by the City of Chicago. 
uh, and, it, and also the, their uh, contact information and the areas of specialty that they're certified in if a firm wants to utilize them for MBE, WBE participation. The, the, city's, the city's directory does not indicate uh, by race uh, the, the, uh, the firm. Uh, that that uh, that information you would have to you know do some digging to get. Mm -hmm. So the transmittal packages that we get, uh, the details that are available online are much less. The details that you get are what what's available online. It, it it mirrors that. So if you were to go to the city's directory, you would see similar information. Mm -hmm. So it's clear to the public, online, the MBWB participation. What is not clear is the race, Correct. and presumably the, the sex more than likely is, right? Correct. Well, yes, WBEs right. uh, and MBEs. So we're not identifying the specific race of the MBE, uh, MBE participants. Correct, because, because the goal is 25 and 5. It's a general goal, 25% minority participation and 5% women-owned women business participation. And how, that's, hard that's would you, goal. Well, how hard would it be for you to call the, con the awardee and just ask? We, 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 can, we can look through our schedules and see, and see if, the, if there's indication there in our schedules and get it that way. And we, if, if, you know, if, if you would like, we can do that. We get, we get it in Schedule A. Right, as it is right, attached right. to the contract. So I guess my question is, how hard is it to relay that additional information in what is made available to the public? We, it, we, we could make it available. If, if, they so ch if, if I'm directed to do that, we can make it available. And it, it, directed. It, I, I think it's already online, actually, I, I think it in is the too. contracts. That's my point. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's online. Yeah. Our contracts are online, including all the uh, MBEW once schedules. They are once, granted, once the board approves. Once they are granted, right. Once the board so approves. I think his concern, if I'm paraphrasing him, please forgive me, but I think his concern is as it is being brought to us for deliberation and as a member of the public who wants to speak to this and be aware of it, he seems to be unaware of uh, the composition of the, pro mm -hmm. the proposed procurement before it is actually approved. And this is the information he's asking for. It, uh, we can make those schedules available with, with the board letters. and uh, at the Even time if it's a redacted yeah, version. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other further discussion? No. A motion, please. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, if no objection, we'll apply the last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. Motion carried, and the matter is adopted. Item 6, from the Director of Planning, Construction, and Facilities Authorization to enter into a change order for North Grant Park renovation design and construction, administration services. We will also have a presentation on the topic from GIA. <laughs> Thanks. Rob Raymond, Director of Planning, Construction, and Facilities. <laughs> yeah. It's recommended that a change order be approved affecting the contract for subject work uh, for additional services required for design and construction management of North Grant Park. Uh, the change order amount, or the contract amount prior to the change order was four point, sorry, four million two hundred ninety-six thousand four hundred seventy-three dollars and seventy-five cents. The amount of this proposed change order is nine hundred twenty-one thousand nine hundred seventeen dollars, for a new contract amount of five million two hundred eighteen thousand three hundred ninety dollars and seventy-five cents. Um, of this change order, approximately 785000 is in uh, design fees with a $375,000 reimbursable allowance for said work. Um, just, it's, a, it's a substantial change order for a substantial job. Um, the project has, just so you know, the project has grown in scope um, since its inception to include a whole new area, Peanut Park, uh, for its development and restoration because we're using it to, to bring down cost. Uh, for so soil storage uh, during uh, removal, removal of the garage. Uh, we also have some signature items uh, like the, cl the new clock rock climbing feature, and we're developing CDs for all of these, as well, and including construction administration for all of this work in uh, the design. Um, I can comfortably say that soft costs to date, including this change order, are well within industry standard for a job of this size. Um, and what I'd like to do is jump right into where we're at with design, and we can take any questions you have um, after uh, Gia sort of walks you through where we're at. This is over the Millennium Park Garage, uh, the over the Grant Park Garage. Grant Park, East Monroe Garage. Uh -huh. 
So this is uh, the project that is in negotiation with Chicago Loop Parking. It's it's in cooperation with them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is a cross section of the area that we're talking about. And so we're talking about Daily Bicentennial Plaza. And so what I'll do is I'll walk through some of the design elements, but put it into context and talk about the last couple of years of community process and how we got to the design to where it is today. Um, this is essentially the sandwich that we're working with. So if you look in the image, what we have on top is a park. Um, at the bottom, we have a parking garage that exists, the East Monroe Garage, and in between, there's a membrane, and this is a waterproofing membrane that absolutely needs to be repaired, and it's, it's the responsibility of the garage operator to make those repairs as part of our initial garage agreement with the city and then uh, the parking garage vendor. And so the, this project has to happen, and in order to replace the membrane, you actually have to scrape off the park, the entire park from essentially where the ice rink is now, headed south to Monroe, um, stopping just shy of the uh, golf course. Um, and so this is this is what's at stake here, and this project needs to move forward. So this is our uh, our glamorous site plan. Um, this is the final design for the park. Um, you know, we've been working on this project, and I, I kind of feel like long in the tooth standing here because I think it's been six or seven years that we've been in dialogue on this project. Um, it initially started. Um, with the parking garage uh, deal and then worked through the potential for a children's museum. And where we are today is that um, we're able to develop, I think, a world-class park space that meets the challenge, really, of developing a space that is globally significant, really, in the lexicon of great park spaces internationally, that meets the test that, that was really established by Millennium Park, which is across the street, um, and is an altogether different kind of park but then also offers kind of the local spaces, that feeling where you can have um, kind of small moments in a large landscape, and we're doing that um, by, I think, um, really well-intentioned landscaping and signature features. So really, I'll get into some detail on these, but there are, there are a couple of big elements with this design. So one is the landscape. And so we're building on structure. So we've hired Michael Van Valkenburg and Associates who've built a number of projects on structure, on top of garages, on top of water, um, a lot of projects in New York, Brooklyn Bridge Park being one of them. Um, and so the challenge is how do you develop a signature element with landscape there? And so we're looking at using topography and creating lawn valleys and really long views through the park and also maintaining views to the balance of the park, um, the balance of Grant Park. Um, and so with topography, we're using elements like foam that will actually build up the landscape and will have actual dirt and grass and trees right on top of that. Um, so it's a highly engineered process, um, but it's successful and it will really make for a dramatic landscape. The other big idea in this plan are the signature elements, and that is uh, at the north end of the site, um, you'll see kind of a, uh, a squirrely looking pathway um, with these purple things in it. Um, and that is our very unique ice skating ribbon and inside it, a rock climbing park. Um, that's a huge element that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and then to the southeast corner of the park at Monroe and Lakeshore Drive, we have a play garden where we're attempting to establish really a new kind of play area that integrates landscape, that uses all, the, all senses that children have, um, and, and looks at developing kind of a new, almost a new idiom for play spaces and parks. Community process. So um, I, I've worked on a lot of projects, and this was one of the most um, intense, in-depth community processes that I think we've been involved with in a long time. Um, I can literally say over 100,000 people have seen this plan. And I can say that because we, when we finished up our process, we actually had our final uh, unveiling in a gallery setting in, in Block 37 in the Pedway and stood there for many hours and had the plans up there for over a week to make sure that the whole public could see our work. But where did that begin? That began with a number of meetings, not just downtown, but also in the neighborhoods. It was very important for us to establish that this park is, is two things, right? It's a backyard for people who live nearby, across Randolph particularly, where you had high-density residential development in the last 10 years, but it's also Chicago's front yard. And so we needed to bring the project to communities. So uh, we had a meeting at the Garfield Park Conservatory, which you know you heard about work going on there today. We went up north to the Broadway Armory. We went south to the South Shore Cultural Center and really did our best to get, give everyone an opportunity to talk about the park. Um, subsequent to that, we had n a number of meetings with stakeholders. We had 
a series of meetings where we would have over 200 people in attendance. And so these were well attended, um, really um, intensive conversations. But we also um, tried to make ourselves available using social media. So we had Facebook uh, and Twitter um, outlets to reach people. We had a project website. And then we also did a survey where we had over 1,500 respondents asking them key questions about what they'd like to see in the park, what it means to them, and really kind of working through all of these issues. So this is the view looking from uh, the famous uh, Geary Bridge looking east toward the lake. Um, and so it's dramatically different than what you see there now. What's there now, um, we have a series of, of tennis courts and sort of it's a very flat landscape. And so we're looking at bringing in all different kinds of plant species and really develop these areas that respond to what the community was saying. You know, They wanted to have a combination of these signature attractions, but also have these passive spaces, opportunities for picnicking, strolling, that kind of thing. Um, this is a close view of the climbing park area. So really, this area, it's, it's these two elements. Um, with the skating ribbon, the idea, and I, I sort of call it alpine in the city, um, it's a sort of a pathway that's moving in and out of evergreens and trees with winter interest that's surrounding this uh, climbing park that is sculptural, highly designed, um, and, and really offers the unique opportunities to see the city from all different vantage points. Um, that's a view of the climbing towers with the skating ribbon in the summertime wrapped around it. So it's not just an ice rink all the time, but it's this multifaceted uh, surface uh, that we can use for whether it's kids on scooters, whether it's setting up gallery settings for exhibitions, whether it's staging for things that people would like to do there, and the rock climbing being a very active um, activity in the uh, summertime and in the fall, and you know these days uh, with the great winter we had, maybe in the winter. But the challenge here too, though, is season four, which is winter, right? It's very easy to plan for spring, summer, fall. They take care of themselves. But what we wanted to do was make sure that it was also active in the winter. And that, that's a challenge with a lot of parks um, in, in our climate. And so this is the skating ribbon actually at night where the rock climbing walls will be lit up. Um, there are you know, these really wonderful sculptural elements. We'll have a small concession where you can rent skates and get a cup of hot chocolate and really have it be this fantastic destination. And actually, the skating path itself it's twice the length of a lap around a regular hockey rink. So it will be sort of a really long, um, interesting experience, really, really fabulous for both families and um, people of all interests. So this is the play garden. Um, and you can see it's not like a playground that we've ever done before or ever seen before. It's five acres of play, right? But it has a number of different elements. A um, big piece of this was figuring out how to integrate plantings and landscape and really interesting vegetation to appeal to children's sensory, different senses. And so we're looking at plant palettes or plants that are so uniquely interesting to kids where they see it almost as a play element in and of itself. And whether it's something as simple as, you know, uh, planting, you know, fruit trees with blackberries, that kind of thing, where a kid can go and discover and say, hey, I want to come back to this. It's really interesting. Or some of the really dramatic um, pieces that I'll show you in a second that are taking natural elements, whether it's wood and sticks, and really bending and shaping things into structures for kids to play on. And so there are all kinds of really uh, cool areas. We have an enchanted forest, um, which which would have things like the tree huts that you see there. Um, we have a, uh, a slide crater. And so we're looking at things. It's, it's sort of almost in the spirit of like Willy Wonka and Alice in Wonderland, where you have things that are just larger than life. A slide where a whole family could go down the slide at the same time. Right? Really, really wild stuff. Um, and you know, we think it's the kind of playground that you're going to come back to over and over again. You won't, even, you won't even realize, too, that sort of how the playground is just blending into the rest of the landscape and really informing the balance of the park. Um, and so this is the central lawn. And so this is, you know, we have these active areas, but then we're also going to have these passive areas. We want people to gather. And people wanted that in their dialogue with us. Um, and that, that's the role that that park has taken now in a lot of ways. But what we're doing it in a way that we're creating these long views. And so this is where you can see very deeply into the park in a way you can't now. Um, but then also has these great berms and, and landscaped hills that will make it feel inviting and give it kind of that interest that no other park in the city and, it will have. And in this, this park will be like no other park in the world. It really will. Um, so that's my sales pitch, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think it's, um, it's a very exciting project. And, you know, as Rob said, um, 
you know, the change order before you today is really a reflection of that dialogue that we had with the community. We could have put back what was there now, but, you know, what, what was clear was that we need to come up with something world-class, different, in keeping with um, the framework of Grant Park, and, um, and so we're here today to keep that project moving forward. As long as you're giving us this big overview, yeah. did, I miss, did I miss discussion of the field house that's there? Yeah, so the field house, we are going to address it as part of the project. Um, originally with the Children's Museum project, one of the compelling pieces of that project was we were going to get a brand new field house as part of that museum. Um, that's no longer an option for us, but we are going to address the, the, the concrete problems in there, the leaking problems, all of that. We're going to clean it up. We're going to redo the interiors. So no, it's not going to be a brand new field house but it's going to be a lot more functional. It's going to feel better. It's going to relate to the, the new park development that's going in there um, and be a much more functional space than it is now. The roof only. We're doing the roof. We're going to do f interior finishes um, and then some of the exterior. Do you have, it's a great scope. How much of this is, do you think is funded? We think we're very close. Um, we are doing fundraising actively. Um, you know, we have some sense of where it's going to land, but though putting it out to bid is really going to be where the rubber meets the road on that. Um, but we have um, a, we, are, we are working with people who are really engaged in looking to donate funds to the project and who are excited by these elements. This is a wonderful project. Before we vote, I'd, I'd like to uh, make a comment for the record, which is to say that in my uh, own business, A. Lavelle Consulting, I represent Chicago Loop Parking, but I've been advised by counsel here that there is no issue of conflict in this matter that is before us, but I did want to put that on the record. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, one more question. I sure. really don't mean to throw cold water on this, but one of the things, you know, it's great building these things, yeah. very exciting, and then we have to run them. So when you guys design this and you think about, you know, running that skating rink and the other things here, I is there a number that we have some idea when we get this thing what it's going to add to our budget to actually run this thing? Yeah, we're, we're developing those numbers definitely. And, and it has been part of the conversation. I mean, part of, like, for instance, the choices in the plantings are that there will be things that are relatively easy to maintain. There's not, while you do have these lawn areas, we do have kind of those high, high no mow areas in there as well. But I think you're right. I mean, there, we're definitely in conversation with our program staff about how we would manage those things, particularly the rock climbing walls. We're sensitive to that. We do think that this is an opportunity for a conservancy model type of management, and so we're trying to unpack that. I mean, we definitely have different versions of that in the city. There are different versions of it all over the country, um, and we have some time to figure that out. It, you know, I, if I didn't, I don't think I mentioned it. You know, this park, this section of the park will be closed for two summers to get this work done. So we do have some time to work on that. But, I, I mean, I think this is an opportunity to develop the right model for Chicago. That's that combination of an amount of public investment to support the operating and then the amount of private that would hopefully endow some of the maintenance. Does the central lawn lend itself to events? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rob, can I ask you one more question then? Yeah. So, so what's in front of us <coughs> is a change order. Mm -hmm to basically pay an additional $922,000 uh, to the architect. Correct. The firm, right? Mm -hmm. and, and where are we going to be, you know, what do you foresee that this could, in terms of are we locked in? Is there any chance this is a moving target and you're going to be back here in six months or 12 months? And I didn't think of this and we owe them another you know, several hundred thousand dollars. Um, I, we will certainly not be back with a change order of this size again. Um, there will be some additional soft costs as we move toward construction. I think probably by sm much smaller third parties that would be out in the trailer helping to negotiate issues on site. Um, again, it would be very similar to a role that you'd see in an owner's rep for like a size of a project like the Harbor or Bloomingdale Trail or something like that. Uh, but again, scaled to park district standards. We, we tend to keep our costs well under control when it comes to consultants. And this, I assume there's a, there was a negotiation process. The architect came to you and mm -hmm. wanted a certain amount of money. And right. your goal, I hope, was <laughs> to, keep to pay him out. as little as possible yes, and still exactly. retain his services. Exactly. So, again, we look at the percentage of fee to the original scope and the, uh, it, you know, the percentage of increase to the actual, what we think is the construction scope should be commensurate to the percentage increase in design fee. But then we want to see the backup from the subconsultants and whatnot. And um, in this case, we've got specialty consultants that have to do with a pretty complex, you know, uh, chiller system and skate rink and rock climbing walls and, you know, and how it relates to the structure below. So uh, it, it's clear that they do need some special attention from additional subconsultants for these elements. 
and we took a look at their hours and their time commitment, um, as well as uh, their involvement through construction administration, which is substantial given a two-year, you know, construction process. So, yes, we we did negotiate, and it took a while to come to a number, come to the number of hours and the the, the team involved. And finally. <laughs> this is for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. But when do you think we're going to have to scrape this park again after we build it? <laughs> um, let's see. This one lasted 60 years. Was that it? I, I, we're hoping to get, you know, 50, 60 years out of this. Contract, I think the contract obligates loop parking to do it in 50 years. And I'd say, you know, I yeah. life would be longer. Than Your great-grandchildren. Right. right. <laughs> That's the, and, you know, a, a lot of these parks throughout the city that are built on structure have this condition, Millennium Park being included. So that's something for future generations to look forward to. <laughs> Any other discussion? No. Can I have a motion? Um, we had a speaker, uh, Mr. George Blakemore. Uh, All right. We'll take that motion. So moved. There's a second. second. Uh, no objection by last favorable roll call vote to this matter. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Item number seven from the Director of Planning Construction Facilities, authorization to enter into a contract for design services at Park 568. Rob? It's recommended that an order be entered authorizing the general superintendent or his designee to enter into contract with GRAFE for park improvements at uh, Park 568. <clears throat> the park location is at um, 5951 Northwestern Avenue. It's approximately 20.5 acres in the North Region, 40th Ward, um, in Lincoln Square community. Um, uh, just as a note, there is uh, the, the funding for this project is uh, 2.8 million in uh, federal sources, safety. Uh, it's called SAFETEA. It's a federal uh, transportation source. And then 700,000 in TIF money for a total project um, budget of three and a half million dollars, again, all outside funds. Uh, this contractor's amount for design is not to exceed $395,000. Uh, the minority and women known participation are 25 and five. And uh, the scope of services includes preparation of uh, um, construction documents and design development, plus construction administration uh, that follows all regulations and procedures set forth in the federal regulations for the project, so there is a bit, uh, he there's a there's a heavier than normal construction administration services uh, component to this project. Uh, the scope includes fencing, sorry, fencing, trails, boardwalk, fishing stations, uh, interpretive wildlife signage and overlooks, uh, benches, vehicle access, utilities and drainage, <coughs> and that. And so we're just getting started now on design development. Um, and, and hope to be into um, construction next year. Any discussion? Have a motion, please. So moved. Second. No objection. Apply the last favorable roll call vote from prior matter to this matter. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Item 8 from the Director of Planning and Construction <coughs> Facilities authorization to issue final payment for work completed in the connection with the ADA transition plan. Rob. Thank you. Uh, this is to certify that Tyler Lane Construction Company on November 8th, 2011 completed in a satisfactory manner and in full compliance with the terms and conditions of, of the contract all work in connection with Dvorak, West Lawn, and Wood Hill Parks. Um, this, these are all part of our ADA transition plan. Um, you see the, the three locations on the map. And again, this is part of our overall $15 million ADA transition plan. Uh, with many sites, I can see on the map on um, uh, being projected, several levels of uh, design that go into various sites. Uh, some of them are very intensive, uh, brand new elevators and major work that happens in the uh, locker rooms um, through, throughout the facilities as well as around the site in terms of access and approach. Um, other sites are uh, less intensive that don't require elevators but um, facility improvements. Uh, so this is just w these are just three of many, and rather to get too deep into all of the work that's being done as part of the overall ADA program, I'll be coming back with several more um, final pays, and it's, uh, when we get closer to finishing the actual program, I'll present more um, more detail on that. Um, uh, so we're I'm recommending that the order be approved for final payment for Tyler Lane 
in the amount of $29,065.08. The total contract amount is $987,621.95. The MBE participation is 31.6%. WBE is 5.15%. Um, I'm sorry, final amount was 5%. And uh, that's, that's it. Any discussion? So moved. Second. Uh, I have no objection by last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Item nine, item, the last item from the Director of Planning Construction Facilities Authorization issue <coughs> final payment for work completed in connection with Dunbar, Dunbar, Dunbar Park improvements. Rob. Thank you. This is to certify that Fine Line BT Corporation on August 27, 2011, completed in a satisfactory manner and in full compliance with the terms and conditions of the contract, all work in connection with Dun Dunbar Park improvements. It's therefore recommended uh, for final payment in favor of Fine Line in the amount of $23,015.62. The total contract amount was $1,150,000, I'm sorry, $781.10. The MBE participation was 57% for this contract, and WBE was 6%. Uh, this is a picture of the park before uh, the previous playground. Here's some, some photos of the completed park. New entries, pathways uh, that arc through the park and create a much better experience at the entry of the park, um, spray ground component, and the new playground. And I can take any questions. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. Second, please. Second. I have no objection to apply the last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. <coughs> that concludes the Committee on Capital Improvements. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All those in favor by saying <laughs> aye. Uh, aye. Against. Aye. Motion carried and the meeting is adjourned. On this day, Wednesday, April 11th, 2012, at uh, 11.51 a.m., a meeting of the Committee of the Whole of the Board of Commissioners is being held in the 8th floor boardroom of the Administration Building located at 541 North Fairbanks. Will the Secretary please take a roll call? Commissioner Shalaby. Uh, Commissioner Koldike? Yep, here. Commissioner Hanlon? Here. Commissioner Laval? Here. Commissioner Salgado? Vice President Armstrong? Here. President Schaubert? Here. Form is present. Let the record reflect that General Superintendent Michael Kelly and First Deputy General Counsel Timothy King are also in attendance. Uh, this meeting will please come to order. At this time, the Board of Commissioners will go into executive session to consider various matters which are pursuant to the Illinois Open Meetings Act appropriately discussed in executive session. There will be a meeting with a representative of a statewide association of which the Park District is a member for the purpose of self-evaluation of practices and procedures. Before I entertain a motion, I would like to state that we anticipate being in executive session for about 90 minutes, at which time we will meet back here in the 8th floor boardroom uh, to return to open session. That being said, is there a motion? So moved. Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion is carried. The meeting is now in executive session. Uh, all in favor signify aye. by saying aye. 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 Uh, the Board of Commissioners has met in executive session to meet with a representative of a statewide association of which the Park District is a member for the purpose of self-evaluation of practice and procedures. No final action was taken. That concludes the meeting of the Committee of the Whole. Is there a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. All aye. those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those against? Motion carried. The Committee of the Whole is now adjourned. Mm -hmm.